Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course V-Ray 5 Masterclass, your complete guide to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. It's a massive 15 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of V-Ray 4 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Now let's pick up the pace a bit and go for a wood parquet shader. This time we'll use V-Ray material as we don't need subsurface scattering for wood. So create a new V-Ray material and assign it. Add a V-Ray bitmap node and load this parquet.png texture. As this is the diffuse color texture and we are in ACES, set the RGB color space to sRGB. I'm gonna also set its tiling to around 0.75 so it sits larger on the shader ball. I'd like to use the roughness mode when using very material, so let's change the mode to roughness. Set the reflection color to white. And IR can remain at its default state as we discussed earlier. Now let's go for the reflection roughness immediately. I'm going to load this parquet underscore roughness texture. Change the color space to raw and tiling to 0.75 like our diffuse color texture. I'm going to quickly invert the texture as this texture was created for glossiness workflow. If I view the image and zoom in, you notice the narrow edges between the boards are black, which if used as a roughness map will end up giving us sharp reflections in those areas. And the wood grains are also darker, which again make the surface sharper if used as the roughness texture. By inverting it, the map will be proper to be used as a roughness map. You can do that in the output rollout of the texture. And another suggestion to Chaos Group, just use the roughness map like any other modern workflow and ditch the glossiness value. Just replace it completely and be done with it. We can connect it directly to the reflection roughness input or like the plastic shader, let's put it through an output map for further adjustments. So connect the roughness texture to an output map. And connect the output map to the reflection roughness input. I'm just going to make the dark values a bit brighter by increasing the first point Y value to around 0.1 and that would make the sharp parts less sharp. Now connect it to the reflection roughness input. Let's quickly add some bump mapping as well. I'm going to copy the specular roughness map and load this parquet underscore bump texture. Just make sure it's not inverted because if we take a look at the texture, we know for bump maps the black pixels cause indents and this map looks right at its raw state and connect it to the bump map input of a very normal map node. And connect that to the bump map input of the very material. And let's decrease the bump amount to around 0.25. Now let's add that overall waviness like the plastic shader. I'm just going to steal the noise and the bump to normal from one of the plastic shaders. and connect the bump to normal to the normal input of the VRA normal node 
and set the normal amount to 0 0.25, 0 0.3 like the plastic shader. Thankfully, Viri Material has a code component, so we don't need to use any trickery to get that sharper perpendicular reflections. Just set the code amount to 0.3, code roughness to 0.1, as I don't want them to be very, very sharp in this case, and code IOR to around 1.25, so the code will be limited to only the incidence angles, as we discussed in the code video a few lessons back. So that is our simple parquet shader. Let me just stop the IPR and show you the final render for this shader here. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.